This episode of The Startup Life is brought to you by People Ready. Startup Nation, you have a lot on your plate. The last thing you need to stress about is finding quality staff or the available work you need to be successful. Save time and headache by working with a trusted staffing partner that meets your everyday needs. People Ready is a national staffing provider with over 600 locations across the country and 30 plus years of experience serving people just like you. They specialize in a variety of industries including retail, manufacturing, logistics, general cleaning, hospitality, construction, and more. People Ready understands that you're busy and on the go. That's where their mobile app, JobStack, comes in. Use the app to place orders or find work 24-7 or wherever you are. And as social distancing continues to change the way we interact with customers, colleagues, and our everyday lives, JobStack provides the ability to find the right temporary workers or work you need while eliminating the amount of physical touch points needed in the staffing process. Visit PeopleReady.com forward slash Startup Life to learn more about how you can partner with People Ready. It's time to be about that life, the startup life. Here's your host, Dominic Lawson. All right, Startup Nation. So I hope you're ready to receive some value today. My name is Dominic Lawson, and this is the Startup Life the show for entrepreneurs and career-minded professionals. You know, Startup Nation, with everything going on, our best commodity here on the planet is people. And a a lot of them, Startup Nation, are not doing so well. But I'm here to tell you, we have a fantastic guest that can help us out to how we can help people out for sure. He is a globally renowned faith figure and best-selling author. He is the lead pastor and founder of Zoe Church, a youth-oriented Christian congregation that is based in Los Angeles, California. He is also the author of Help, I Work With People, Getting Good at Influence, Leadership, and Peak People Skills. He is the one and only Pastor Chad Veach. Brother Veach, what's going on, my man? Hey, man. Thanks so much for having me on. It's an honor to be here. No worries. So, so look, man, check it out. You no, know, Are you ready to pour some knowledge in the Startup Nation? Because we can definitely use your help today, my man. <laughs> well, I'm... I'll do I'll do my very best. We'll see what happens. I got you for sure. For sure. So if you would, man, just kind of tell me about growing up in Washington a little bit. Yeah. You know, the last year I lived there, it rained 91 straight days. I said, wow. Jesus, you got to get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I grew up with a lot of rain, a lot of wind, but um, I really loved growing up in Washington. It was a great place to grow up right. and uh, really enjoyed my time there. But um, I- I'm loving being in California now. Kind of tell me about, you know, your parents a little bit and, you know, your, your faith journey because i know kind of you know as you say one foot in one foot out of the faith kind of talk about that a little bit yeah you know I, it's not that i was you know wilding and being rebellious yeah, and doing right, you know crazy right. stuff it right. was, I, I just you know like a normal kid was just kind of doing my own thing and having fun and really wasn't trying to uh you know maybe serve god so to speak when i was a teenager but i had a moment in my life where i just thought you know that's what i want to do with my life and, um, and I never looked back. So, it, it, you know, I think it's, it's that thing where for a long time growing up, faith is something that it's your parent. And then hopefully one day it, it becomes internal and it becomes yours. Thank you uh, for sharing that for sure. So, man, let's talk about your book, man. Once again, Startup Nation, that book is Help. I Work With People. And Startup Nation, that book is available today. Uh, we have a link there in the show notes for easy access. If you listen to the replay on the podcast to go ahead and purchase that book. So you, you've you written books in the past, man. But, you know, tell me about this book a little bit. You know, what kind of prompt are you writing it? Well, you know, I had a friend of mine that is a leadership guru. He's just the best. His name's Craig Rochelle. Absolutely. And he really encouraged me. He said, um, he said, I, I think you're the perfect age to write a leadership book and start a leadership podcast. Mm-hmm. And at the time I was thinking, wait, what? I don't know <laughs> about that. I don't know if that's for me, but he really nudged me and I felt like he's right. I'm supposed to do this. So I came back home from a, a lunch with him and I started a leadership podcast and I started working on a leadership book and here we are. We're, 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 we're go time. It's launch time. For sure. For sure. And Startup Nation, that that podcast is Leadership Lean In. We have a link there in the show notes for easy access uh, as well. So I, I want to talk about a, a few things in the book. I think one of the things that kind of stood out for me is uh, chapter six. Awkward is a gift. You know, I, I know myself. Uh, I, I've been, I'm pretty sure I, I'm probably on the spectrum 
uh, you know, of, of autism or something like that, you know, because I, I've always had like these socially awkward moments and stuff like that. But kind of talk about that. Well, you know, where does that come from? That awkward is a gift. Well, you know, I think the gift that every person brings to the table is their is their unique contract. For sure. You know, none of us are the same. There, no, there's no two people that were ever made the same. We all have a unique gift mix, a unique personality. And I find that most people are trying to be like everybody else when mm. we wish you would just be yourself. And, you know, you are the gift. You are the blessing. So I think we're just trying to really encourage people to say, hey, don't try and be anyone else. People love the authentic, true version of you. Right. And um, I think if we can give people a path to be themselves, then we're going to experience people in their true form. And uh, and I love that. And that's who I want to be. It's who, who I, aspire, I, I aspire to be fully myself in every environment, everywhere I go. And, um, and that could be awkward to some people, but it's me. And, uh, and I love being me. I right. think when you embrace who you are, then you're not so um, insecure in so many settings. I find so many leaders are insecure right. because they're, they're wondering, is this, is this who you want me to be? Is this what I'm supposed to be? And when you're totally comfortable in your own skin, life gets really easy. Right. For sure. No, I, I definitely understand that, you know, and being, you know, kind of being that awkward you know, or having that awkwardness per, uh, out there for the world to see is kind of its own uh, form of leadership, which is what you something you, you talk about uh, pretty often. I know we you know here on the show, the startup life, we talk all the time about the thinkers and the dreamers and the doers. They always ha- they all of them have like this, this, these, these awkward moments or this sense of awkwardness uh, to them. So I just wanted to say, I really appreciate that part of the book for sure. Well, I think it's, it's, it's really just, you know, who we are. It's right. really just, we, you know, the thing about leadership is that yeah, I read a book years ago that said there, there is a dark side to every leader. Mm-hmm. Every leader has issues. Every human has issues. No one is perfect. No one is, you know, so great that they're like a superhero. We all have stuff. And I think the more we can embrace the fact that, you know, we, we got a little bit of a funkiness and uniqueness and I might not be like so and so. I think that's a, a blessing. It's a good thing to not make people fit in this one small box that a leader looks this way. A pastor looks this way. A business leader looks this way. No, no, you be you, and we're we're gonna all be all right. Gotcha. I appreciate that. And you know, speaking of that, I w- want to ask you this. You know, speaking of you know awkwardness or uh, unorthodox, if you will, because you know your your preaching style, first of all, is pretty dope. Let me just say that first and foremost, right? I actually, oh, uh, right, no, no worries, man. Let me let me tell you something. You got it, brother. You got it. I was actually listening to your uh your la- latest sermon from this past Sunday uh, on YouTube, and I was like, man, that that was some powerful stuff, man. I want to ask you about that a little bit later, but for right now, man, just kind of talk about your preaching style and your your style to kind of uh, that you convey to you know showing people how to lead, showing people how to influence. So kind of share with me a little bit about that. Well, I think that you know, um, I'm what I'm trying to do. Our whole goal is just improve the lives of others. I hear that. You know, whether that's feeding people groceries or that's you know encouraging them to you know step out and be the leader they're called to be, or you know whatever it is. I think just life is about adding value to others. Life is about wanting more for people than from people. Mm. And if we can figure out how to do that, to kind of position our life as servant leaders, as people that want to see others succeed, the guy that's ambitious to be successful himself will never win. But the, but the one that lives to improve the lives of others, I think you're always going to have a following. You're always going to have loyal people around you. You're always going to win if you can make life about others. Right. Right. No, I definitely understand that. And, and and one of the things you talk about often uh, when you talk about scripture and you talk about Jesus and his teachings uh, and stuff like that, you know, when you when you think about, you know, some of those teachings, it really is about serving. And, and that's something that a lot of times, unfortunately, leaders kind of miss is that leadership is really about service, you know, service to uh, the common man, service to your customers, service to your your team members, if you will. So I'm, I'm definitely glad that you uh, you talk about about that often you have that you know throughout your book i appreciate that oh i appreciate well thank you for noticing that and thank you for thank you for uh acknowledging it no worries no worries you know and, and going back to your sermon you know you, you was talking about uh you know uh people are your passion 
you know, kind of talk about that a little bit, because, you know, a, a lot of times people say stuff like that. But, you know, I I, I guess I just want to hear your kind of, you know, uh, extrapolated doctrine on uh, where you come from, how you form that uh, uh, and how you uh, go about, you know, your life and stuff like that. Well, I think, you know, um, when we say people are our passion, what we're really trying to, you know, I think values are that thing that you call people up. It's the standard that we're asking people to live by. Right. And it's so, it's so another way you could say that is it's seed language. What we're trying to tell mm. people is nothing matters more than humans. So that when we get into a situation and so and so acts a fool, we can say, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't treat people like that around here. Right. People are our passion. Our passion is people, improving people, loving people, adding value to people, accepting people. And, uh, and serving people because that's what we see in the life of Jesus. That's, right. that's what he modeled for us. He, he, you know, he, they find him praying and they're like, where you been? He's like, don't even worry about it. Let's go. We're going to go to another city and keep right. serving people. And the Bible literally says that Jesus was so busy serving people. He didn't have time to eat. Mm. So you tell me, was he into his hobbies, you know, more than people? Right. Was he into, was he into himself? How could he be in himself? He looks at his guys. He goes, guys, I got to keep going to the next city because I got to go die on a cross for you. How could you not follow a leader that says, I live for your success. I'm right. going to go die for you. And I think anybody that doesn't get the spirit and the attitude of that, and of course you have to flush it out what it looks like practically for you. But anybody that doesn't get the spirit and the attitude of that is going to really lose. Right. Right. No, I, I definitely understand it. And I appreciate that. And, you know, going back to your sermon, because you said something I thought was pretty profound, because, you know, you know, unless you're living under a rock startup nation, you know, with everything going on, uh, not only do we have COVID-19, but we have uh, uh, civil and social and racial unrest with protests going on and stuff like that. And uh, Pastor Vici, you said something that was quite interesting that I want to ask you about, because you said that, you know, you want to build a church that doesn't, you know, uh, kind of hide or hide behind, like, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the comfort of Christianity or something like that. Kind of talk about what that looks like and what did you mean and, and being accepting of everybody and stuff like that? Well, I think, you know, the, are we going to be the type of Christian community that we just play to the saints? Mm. You know, we just want to reach, you know, more Christians. Right. You know, and I know plenty of churches and ministers that are after that. And it, if I wanted to do that, for me, I feel like I'd be selling out. Gotcha. Because well, it, life is never about, you know, it's never about, is it about the saint or about the sinner? Mm. You know, is it is it evangelism or is it discipleship? The right. gospel is never about one or the other. It's always and both. Life is always lived within a tension. It is the tension between burden and ease, grace and truth, lost people and saved people. So when I say we're about people, we're not just about Christians. It's like, hello, Jesus did not come but to seek and save the lost. Right. But I find a lot of Christians or churches are just pumped about the Christians that, are, that were already rock up. Let me ask you this, though, because, like, you know, do you think that, you know, sometimes there are some in the Christian community where it's like they want to do what you're doing, but it's kind of like, uh, you got to be awkward. You got to put yourself out there. Right. And like they just kind of go with the flock. You know, what do you say to those Christians who want to kind of, you know, reach out to the other side, reach out to people who are not Christian and try to, uh, you know, kind of help them and serve them? What do you say to those to those those? Christians? Well, I, well, I think the fir first thing that we got to, uh, you know, just g come to grips with is, you know, are you trying to do that, you know, uh, and treating people as projects? You know, are you, are you just, right. you know, cause I think people can feel that if you're like, you're, you're trying to be the fixer, you know, most people don't want an Olivia Pope in their life. Right. And so, you know, I think it's about just adding value, serving people, being out there. You know, the thing about church is I can't decide who comes to my church, but right. I can decide who I go out to dinner with. Absolutely. I can decide. I can decide who, who, you know, who comes over for the barbecue. So I think as Christians try and step out to go reach people, it's like, hey, you, you, you decide. It, it, are you going to hang out with only Christians, only believers, only mm -hmm. people of faith? Or are you going to have a meal or two like Jesus? Jesus is like, 
They called him a drunkard. They called him a glutton. They couldn't believe he was hanging out with sinners, sinners let alone famous sinners. And why is he doing that? Because he's like, look, I can't decide who comes to the temple, but I can decide who I go and have a meal with. Once again, Startup Nation, we're talking to Pastor Chad Veach, uh, lead pastor and founder of the Zoe Church there in Los Angeles, California. I want to ask you this because, you know, when you're talking to people about leadership and stuff like that, you have a chapter here where you talk about listen to lead. Kind of talk about that a little bit because I don't think enough leaders listen. Right. Well, I think we listen with an agenda. We listen mm, to change people. Right. I think the thing about, you know, the, the, the whole racial divide in our nation right now, and especially amongst white people and white pastors. Mm. Is that I think I felt like a lot of pastors and a lot of uh, white people in general were listening to make a change instead of listening to learn. Right. You 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 know we 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 can't move forward if, uh, until we first learn. How do we get here? What has been going on? How did you know? What has your experience been? Listening is an art form. It's amazing. We've got two ears, two eyes, and one mouth, and I think that is divine. That is God. God's saying something to us. And so I think the greatest leaders in the world are phenomenal at listening. You know what, Pastor Veach, because, you know, we have people who are uh, in positions, uh, not necessarily of power, but they answer to somebody who's in a position of power. And we say all the time that, you know, you don't have to, you know, titles are not something that requires, uh, you know, or I'm sorry, leadership is not something that requires a title. You know what I mean? So like, let's say I'm, uh, in a boardroom, right? And I'm listening to the CEO of a company and he's saying something like, you know what, that's not entirely true or that's not accurate or something like that. As that subordinate, how can I be of, you know, of service to uh, people, me of service uh, or kind of be that leader to kind of do what's right, even though the, the, the technical leader is kind of saying something that's not unfactual, not true or something like that. What does that look like in your opinion? Yeah, well, I always think, you know, that's why the book is so important. Right. And, you know, getting good at influence, leadership, and people skills. You know, if I have to speak up and say something, am I saying it in such a way that is demonstrative? Right. Am, am I addressing it in such a way that makes the person feel stupid? You know, it's like you got to use grace. You got to use tact. You got to use manners. Um, excuse me, sir. Hey, I um I don't want to be disrespectful in any sort of way. I was just thinking as you were saying that maybe another way to look at it would be this: offering a request of a different opinion mm. rather than just going off and telling them off. And so I think we got to be gracious. You know, when Jesus talked, they marveled at two things: they couldn't believe the authority he had. And they could not believe the grace in which he spoke with. Mm. You know, what are some of those other like, you know, uh, teachings and, and, and doctrines from, you know, from Jesus's works and, and, and his writings and stuff like that, that has really made a profound impact on you, Pastor Veach, and how you lead the Zoe Church, how you uh, have your. Uh, your your social part, you know, with Zoe Cares and Startup Nation, we have that link in the show notes if you want to check that out. Kind of talk about that impact that Jesus' teachings has had on you personally. Oh, man. Well, you know, just so much is, you mm-hmm. know, that Jesus came. He is great. And so, you know, just watching him interact with lost people, watching him interact with the woman at the well, with Zacchaeus, watching him, you know, weep over the, the death of Lazarus, watching him with the woman at at Nain, the widow, you know, widow from Nain, you know, just the 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 the, the guy with the, the the withered hand, like just the way he treated people and interacted with people. I'm so moved by his leadership and his life and 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 his submission to the Father. He says, "I don't do anything unless he says to do it. And I don't go anywhere." It, 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 you know, he just was so submitted, and so I just right. think I I I, I it, it, he's the guy I want to be like, you know. There's all kinds of Zig Ziglar's and Ken Blanchard's and right. John Maxwell's and incredible leaders in the world. But, you know, Jesus is the standard. He's the God. I want to ask you this because, you know, look, we live in a society where, you know, right now where there's a lot of divisiveness. There's a lot of divisiveness. People are on social media kind of, you know, uh, trying to like up in the other person or they're trying to make the other person look crazy or they're trying to they're arguing back and forth. And I, I want to ask you. 
this because I, you know, you have a chapter here called one conversation away. And it made me think about a doctrine that I personally have uh, that I believe most people can be reasoned with. Like you just sit down and have a conversation with them uh, and stuff like that. Kind of talk about, you know, because in leadership roles, you have to do this quite often. You have to talk to somebody who disagrees with you, disagrees with your method, disagrees yeah. with your doctrine or something like that. Right. Kind of talk about, uh, you know, that conversation to not necessarily to convince somebody to your side, but more so to tend to kind of open a dialogue that leads to something that ultimately leads to a, a more fruitful relationship moving forward. Yeah, exactly. I think that's it. I think, you know, that we were talking about this yesterday in church, but it's like always choose the relationship, relationship right. over everything. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think a lot of times people want to win the battle and lose the relationship right. if, 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 if that's what it comes to. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, for sure. Because uh, it, it's, it's just weird because it's like, you know, I have to ask people sometimes is like, do you want to win the battle or, 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 or you know I mean, it's kind of like, what hill do you want to die on? You want to win this battle or do you ultimately want to resolve the thing that you're actually, you know, uh, disagreeing right. with, arguing with and stuff like that. And so I just I, I just know we can use a lot more of that pastor feet in our world today because things are a little crazy, man. Yeah, right, right. Sorry, the world is crazy and right. people are, you know, fired up and right. and I think that we're losing perspective of of longevity. I think we're living in the moment. We're living in the midst of COVID, we're living in the midst of, you know, uh turmoil and we're and we're, we're kind of living in this immediate culture. Right. And we've got to do a better job of saying, you know, I got to slow down and I got to find a way to salvage relationship and salvage what is right. Um, about life. It, it, one of my favorite things that we've been talking about every week is you can't do life well if you're doing people wrong. Right. Or, you, or you, another way to say that is if you're doing relationships wrong. So you, eventually it's going to erode at your soul if you've got all these, you know, uh, this, I, I call it blood in the water behind you. There's blood mm. in the trail behind you because of right. all these, you know, relationships that have gone south. So we got to find a way to to, to find a common ground and to, to stay linked together and to love one another. All right, Startup Nation, so we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. we got to pay some bills. Once again, my name is Dominic Lawson, and you're listening to The Startup Life. This fresh coat of the startup life has been sprayed on nice and smooth by Wagner and the Flexel series of paint sprayers. Startup Nation, my wife decided she wanted to rehab her childhood home. The goal was to fix it up and invite a nice family to rent it out. We knew one of the biggest jobs we had to undertake was painting. However, from the walls, the cabinets, and even the siding outside, it was going to be a big task. As entrepreneurs with a company to run, we knew this was going to take up a lot of our time which is why we decided to get a paint sprayer. And after much research, we decided to go with the sprayer from the Flexio series from Wagner. Startup Nation, these sprayers are top notch because of its flexibility to paint or stain walls, furniture, cabinets, and more. It's 10 times faster than using a paintbrush, which was a big selling point for us. And you can paint or stain right from the can. It's also easy to clean in five minutes and being great for indoor and outdoor projects, a paint sprayer from the Flexio series clearly needs to be part of the arsenal in your garage. So if you're ready to stain your deck or like me, feel your daughter's request of a bubblegum pink room, up your game with a paint sprayer from the Flexio series by Wagner. Take it from me. Your time will thank you. This episode is sponsored by Swanson Health. Startup Nation, Swanson Health has been producing quality vitamins and supplements, foods, healthy home, and self-care products for over 50 years, since 1969, from the heart of America. Swanson Health carries over 20,000 wellness products at a great value. Pick up all of your favorite health products, plus discover new ones for your wellness routine, 
all while leaving money in your pocket. If you want to try any of Swanson Health's great products for yourself, use code STARTUP20 for 20% off at Swanson.com. We have a link there in the show notes if you listen to the replay. This episode of The Startup Life is powered by Colony Spark. Startup Nation, with our economy in flux, there is a lot of mixed messaging out there. If there was ever a time to take control of the narrative and let your customers know that you're here to serve them, it's now. And that's why you have a friend in Colony Spark. Colony Spark is an omni channel marketing agency that believes in the power of community to ignite your business. They have helped companies across many industries with lead generation, revenue growth, and more to put them on the path to success. My guy Bill Murphy and his team are very good at what they do. How do I know this? Because not many SEO companies have the stamp of approval of being partnered with Google. Yes, that Google. So I want you to go to www.colonyspark.com forward slash startup to schedule a meeting today. In that meeting, you will review your current marketing activity, receive actionable advice on how to pivot and grow, and ask any marketing questions you may have on navigating over the next few months. Look, Startup Nation, I know things may seem uncertain right now, but if you are looking for a business partner that can help light the way, go with Colony Spark, where they firmly believe in business helping business. All right, Startup Nation, welcome back as we continue our conversation with today's guest here on The Startup Life. You mentioned COVID and you mentioned uh, talking to people at the church yesterday. Kind of talk about, you know, the transition, like what's been going on lately uh, as you've been transitioning. I know you're uh, doing sermons and having social distancing there. Are you doing sermons online? Are you doing your social distance thing at the church there? Kind of talk about uh, what that's been like for the past couple of months for you and your church. Yeah, it's just a whole new uh, era. Absolutely. It's a whole new day, right. whole new you know, time and in, in culture and life. And I think that, you know, we're just, <laughs> preaching to a camera, you know, you got, you got to learn how to do it real quick and get good at it. And, and at first I was preaching and it's like, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be very funny because it's like, it's me and the camera guy, <laughs> right? Right. you know, I don't know how much faith is going to be in this message because it's me and the camera guy, but I think you just got to learn to do your best and everybody, you know, the great thing about right now is we're all in the same boat. We're all figuring Absolutely. it out together. And so, but you know, I think we got to remember this, Two shall pass. It's not going to stay like this forever. Right. Right. No, no, you're absolutely right. And, you know, and I, I imagine that, you know, it was probably a, a weird transition trying to just, you know, look into the camera and stuff like that. But uh, I want to ask you this, Pastor Veach, because, you know, like like I said, with everything going on, you know, people are looking for those leaders, those inspirational uh, you know, leaders to kind of give them that hope, give them that, you know, that sense of like, you know, this too shall pass and, and, and talk about it like that. Do you ever have those conversations uh, with God to say, like, lead me, you know, show me how do I do this? Like, you know, there are a lot of people hurting right now. Kind of talk about, if you don't mind, uh, talk about that conversation with, with God and, and yourself and your family, because I imagine there's a little bit of pressure in a time like this when people yeah. are looking for you, right? Yeah. Looking to you, right? Kind of talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah. Well, first of all, we're always dependent upon God. We're always in, in, Absolutely. in needing God. I think there's times that you're aware of it more than others. Mm-hmm. You know, so you use the word pressure. It's like, yeah, right now, it's like we need God. We need help. We need, you know, wisdom. We need direction. We need vision. We need insight. We need, so it's like you're really dependent right now. So I think that's a good thing. I don't think that's a bad thing. Right. Remember, Jesus said in John 15, apart from me, you do no good thing. That you remain, he says it seven times, remain in me, remain in me, remain in me, remain in me. I think, you know, anytime we get away from our dependence upon God, we start getting on a slippery slope. So, you know, it's a good thing to be, to be dependent upon God. We, we all need his His voice, his direction. And uh, in, 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 I think right now is an okay time because it reminds us of that. Right. Right. For sure. For sure. Thank you for sharing that. Once again, Startup Nation, we're talking to Pastor Chad Veach, uh, lead pastor and founder of the Zoe Church. So, you know what, uh, Pastor Veach, kind of talk about building the church. I know next Sunday is, is a pretty big milestone for you uh, and the church. Uh, kind of talk about, you know, the process of building the church, what it's been like, the experience, uh, and what does that, that, that uh, milestone mean to you? Yeah, I think that the the, the milestone is, um, you know, just it's significant, you know, that we've right. made it, we've done something, we've gotten here, we're, we're you know, we're not losing, we're not, we're not having to fold up shop. I think it's right. a big, big deal to finally get to a place of 
um, you know, established, being established. And, 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 you know, not every church plant makes it, especially in a city like L.A. So I think it's a good thing to, um, you know, to, to have these milestones that remind you of how good God's been and how far he's brought us. Right. Right, for sure. No, it's, it's, it's definitely, you know, quite the feat, you know. Uh, I, I live here in Tennessee, in the, you know, the Bible Belt South. And so I, I know a little something about, you know, churches kind of being here today and not there the next day. So, uh, I imagine it's not, it's, it's not an easy feat. It's not an easy feat. It's a lot like building a business. So I, I definitely, uh, understand that. Uh, Pastor Veach, I, I want to ask you this because, you know, like I said, there's people who are going through tough times and stuff like that. And you you've gone through that uh, personally yourself. I know there was, uh, you know, the uh, issue with your daughter, Georgia, and stuff like that. Kind of talk about that process. How did you how did you make it through that? You know, how did you make that, you know, with, through your, you know, with your wife and stuff like that? Yeah, not easy. Right. I right. mean, you have a sick daughter. Yeah, you, you, you face a situation like that. It's not the, uh, the easiest thing in the whole world. But, you know, I think it's times like that that help you realize how much pain the rest of the world is in. Right. Times like that that make you realize how dependent we all are on God. And, you know, it makes you also believe in our theology a little bit better that this world isn't our home. This is not, I'm not a citizen of this place. I'm going to a better place. It's got streets of gold, no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more poverty, no more racism. Right. And there's always going to be pain and problems here on this earth. So I think going through that situation and still facing it helped me realize and understand that God is so good. He is so merciful and he has provided a better citizenship for us. And that's heaven. So going through pain, going through problems is inevitable on this planet, but we're going to get through it to the other side and I think we're going to be way better because of what we faced here. We're going to be more appreciative and more thankful for the good times. When you go through bad times, you are really more thankful for the good times. For sure. No, I, I appreciate that. And a quick follow up, you know, because I, I personally believe that when you go through those tough times and you go through those those tribulations, that you've become something. You become something stronger, you become something better. Did you do do you feel that way? Uh, you know, uh, you know, coming on the other side of that, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I feel that. I feel that. You know, strongly that you know it strengthens your faith. If you can lean in and trust God, that's why the Bible says, you know, count it, consider it all joy, count it all joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you face trials and tribulations, many times knowing that the test of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance have its perfect work, so that you may be complete and mature, not lacking anything. Well. All of that sounds great on the back end, but the front end is really hard. It's trials and tribulations. Right. So if you can go through it and trust God, the, the, the result, the benefit, the blessing of it is just insurmountable, unbelievable. So you got to just go through it. Gotcha. No, I definitely uh, understand that for sure. You know, transitioning to something uh, a bit lighter. I want to ask you this because, you know, you often said that, you know, Instagram uh, built your church. Uh, so I want to ask you this. How does one build a church with Instagram? Uh, but also, you know, why do you think uh, so many people, uh, you know, like I said, we talked at the top of the show. You've had so many rave endorsements, you know, the Courtney Kardashians of the world, and the Justin Bieber's of the world and stuff like that. What, what is it about your message you think that just resonates with people? Well, I, I that's a great question. I don't know what, what it is, but I think, you know, it's um, I think it's it's the spirit of who you are, the spirit of our church. You know, remember, you as a minister, you minister from mind to mind, heart to heart, and spirit to spirit. Mm. So if you can have a beautiful spirit, people are drawn to, you know, L.A. calls it energy or vibes. Oh, my gosh, I love your energy. Your, your vibes are so great. <laughs> well, we know it's the Holy Spirit. Right. And so I think that we've just got to keep a pure spirit, a clean spirit, a vibrant, joyful spirit, and that will become consistent pages to others for sure no I, I definitely understand that you know just like just like a bad mood a good spirit is definitely uh contagious i, I think we experienced that uh a lot you know uh you know when, when we weren't when we weren't social distancing and we were you know fellowshipping together and stuff like that so no i, I definitely understand that but i guess it works you know uh even with a social distancing you know if you have a great spirit and 
you're on social media and you're putting out put good vibes and stuff like that. People do gravitate towards towards that. You know, obviously, you know, you know, with, you know, with what you do in your YouTube channel and stuff like that. So I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. No worries. No worries. So. Uh, once again, Startup Nation, we're actually wrapping up with uh, Pastor Chad Veach. He is the author of Help, I Work With People, Getting Good at Influence, Leadership, and People Skills. So, uh, Pastor Veach, I want to ask you something, man, because, you know, you know, like I said, you're 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 a little different than, you know, most pastors when we see him. We see him, you know, in the, the big robes and cloaks and, and, and stuff like that, man. And you're right here wearing Air Force Ones, man. Tell me about your shoe game a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> man. You know what's cool about shoes is like you know I always think shoes are a currency and culture. Oh, right, like if I sure. have on fresh shoes, I walk to the mall. No one knows I'm a pastor, but someone walks up and goes, "Yo, I like your shoes." Right. I'm already winning with them. Absolutely. I'm already in with them. So I think shoes are they're just the language of culture. So you know, again, if we're going to try and reach people, we always say everything about us says everything about us. Mm. So from what my hat to my jacket to my to you know, my pants to my shoes. Everything about it says everything about it. So I think it says so much about you. Like if you can dress in a way that captures culture, because as I go to win somebody, I'm already winning with them. Do, do you ever get, you know, uh, you know, like maybe uh, from the I'm not going to say the old guard, but do you ever get like flack from like maybe the more traditional pastor, minister and stuff like that? And, and when you do get that flack, if you do, uh, you know, does that say you know, is it just because it's just different? Is it because they just don't like your style? What do you think that is? Yeah, well, I think, you know, the old timers are always going to be threatened by, <laughs> you know, the, the the new guys. You know, right, I sure. think that's the, probably the challenge of growing old, even for myself. Right. Is there's going to be a generation that comes up and they're going to use social media platforms that I might not think are cool. And they're going to dress in ways that I, you know, whoa, I don't know about that. Right. And I hope that they do push the limits and I hope they do reinvent it. And I hope they do go further than us. So I think that's just part of human nature. We're always threatened by what we don't know. We're threatened by what's not familiar. And so I think that's just a part of life. It's a part of developing and growing. And we got to do our best to, you know, embrace what's different. I think right. <laughs> I think so much of, uh, of the racial divide that we see in America right now is people being afraid of anything that doesn't look like them. Big facts. Not understanding the other side. I think that's going to be a part of humanity, you know, for as long as we're around. For sure. No, I, I definitely agree with you, Pastor Vich, and, and appreciate uh, you sharing that. And, you know, what? I want to ask you this big picture here. Speaking of getting older and stuff like that, I know uh, the, the the famous, you know, uh, Pastor Billy Graham, uh, you know, rest in peace, who's no longer with us. Uh, he he, he kind of, you know, was got to a point where he was like advising presidents and advising heads of state and stuff like that. And, you know, I mean, sometimes he's often regarded as America's preacher. Uh, if you will, you know, given when he was uh, here uh, with us, you know, as you begin to grow and your uh, and your following grows and stuff like that. And I, and I understand, like, that's not what you're doing. That's not what this is all about. I totally understand that. But what I'm saying is that, like, do you ever think big picture? Do you ever see yourself advising heads of state, advising presidents, advising uh, big time Fortune 10 CEOs of companies and stuff like that? Well, you, you, I mean. To answer your question, I think, first of all, I never envisioned anything that I'm doing. You know, I never Fair sat enough. down and went, you know, one day I'm going to be doing this, that, and the other. I'm going Absolutely. to write books and I'm going to, I didn't ask God for any of this. I asked to be used by God. Of course. I think it's about course. putting one foot, one foot in front of the other, getting up every day. Greatness doesn't happen in a day. It happens daily. Just chipping away at whatever's in front of you. I think so much of life is stewardship. You know, just being faithful with who he's put in your world now, being faithful to serve and pray for and love the people that you got right now. So I've never asked God for, you know, anyone of great influence or anyone, you know, of this, you know, NBA or uh, PGA golfer, anything like that, an actor or a singer or anything. You know, so I think to answer your question, all of that's awesome, but all of that is so sovereign. It is so God. Um, is is it a dream of mine? Is it in my heart? Yeah, of course. I would love to help CEOs and Fortune 500 companies and speak to you know Delta Airlines, the entire company. No question. Right. Uh, but you know, all of that's in God's hands. So we're just right now we're trying to be faithful with today. 
I hear that. No, I definitely understand. I, I guess I just see it as like, you know, uh, you know, because when you get to that point, clearly, you know, you're, you're helping even more people and you're changing and impacting more lives. So I just kind of want to ask you about that. Awesome. I love that question. For sure. No worries. No worries. So, you know, before we uh, ask the last question, Pastor Veach, man, it's been a pleasure, uh, you know, uh, you know, talking to you and, and rapping with you and talking about your book. Once again, Startup Nation, that book is Help. I work with people getting good at influence, leadership and people skills. Once again, that link is in the show notes for easy access. If you listen to the replay on a podcast to go ahead and purchase, uh, you know, like I said, man, I think you are an amazing speaker, an amazing pastor. Like I said, I, I listened uh, and watched your YouTube uh, of your la- latest sermon. It's it's fire. It's fire, my man. You know, as, as we say here in Memphis, it's fire. Uh, but, you know, I actually want to turn the microphone over to you, my man, because, look, like I said, there's a lot of people out there uh, hurting and going through a tough time. If you would, please, sir, just give us some words of encouragement to take us out for today. Well, I would just want to, you know, first encourage every person. There's more people that are for you than against you. <laughs> I, I, I don't know who I'm encouraging right now, but, you know, sometimes it feels like this person's against me. This soul so to in this situation. There are more people that are rooting for you, are encouraged by you, are being blessed by your life. So first of all, let's just realize there's more people that are for you than against you, and you're doing better than you think you are. I know you didn't roll out of bed today going, man, I'm killing it. Wow, am I awesome. Look at my life. It's amazing. But you know what? I want to remind you, nobody, including you, thought you'd get this far. You're doing better than you think you're doing. You're making a greater impact. You're having tremendous results on the things you're working on. And it's all by the grace of God. So continue to receive grace because the greater you receive, the greater you can give away. You cannot give away what you don't possess. So please be encouraged today that everything is going to work out and continue to walk in the grace of Jesus. I hear that. Thank you so much. And that's going to wrap up our time here on the Start of Life with Pastor Chad Beach. Pastor Beach, Brother Beach. I appreciate you, brother. Hey, thank you so much for having me on. It was a real treat. And uh, keep doing what you're doing, man. I appreciate that. And as always, Startup Nation, if you have an idea, be about that life, the Startup Life. If you want to let us know what you think about our show, have an idea for a show topic, or would like to advertise on our show, send us a message on the Startup Life Podcast Facebook page. And while you are there, like and follow our page as well. It's a great way for us to engage with you, Startup Nation, and really grow our community. The link is there in the show notes. Subscribe to the show as it can be heard on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, or even on your Facebook timeline or any other platform you like to get your podcast. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts and you find our content valuable, please give us a five-star rating as it will help us climb the charts and help more people find our show. You can also listen to the show on the Startup Life Podcast new website. There you will find the all-new Startup Blog where I write on many topics that are interesting and helpful to you on your path to entrepreneurship. And hey, If you have an idea, be about that life, the startup life.